Philippines is going digital when it comes to filling out forms for travel purposes. Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. has recently announced the new Philippine e-visa system. He asked that several government agencies to extend the e-visa for Chinese, Indian, South Korean, and Japanese nationals to encourage tourists from their countries to visit the Philippines. Presidential Communications Secretary said Marcos issued the order during a meeting with the Private Sector Advisory Council, which advises the President on government policies. The Private Sector Advisory Council said to capture the tourism markets of China and India, PSAC has recommended the inclusion of Indian nationals under the Visa Upon Arrival Program and the extension of e-visa, which is currently available only for Taiwanese citizens. Now it will be available to Chinese, Indian, South Korean, and Japanese nationals. Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo said his agency is collaborating with the Department of Information and Communications Technology on the development of technical plans for the issuance of e-visa. DICT Secretary Ivan John Uy said his agency is still studying various connectivity matters that have to be threshed out with regard to the other jurisdictions that will avail themselves of the Philippines e-visa platform. In addition, the Private Sector Advisory Council proposed the following changes. So these are good news. First, implementation of a value-added tax refund program for foreign tourists by 2024. So they are trying to emulate other countries' tax refund for foreign tourists. Second, removal of the e-travel or the requirement of just one form only for health immigration and customs purposes in addition they are also proposing the revocation of outdated advisories and loudspeaker announcements at airports other proposed changes by the psac are first the recommendation of the rolling out of the e-visa this year to prioritize china and india in the program also, the automatic inclusion of travel tax in all airline tickets. There are also short-term strategic recommendations. First, the improvement of airport infrastructure and operations. Also, the promotion of tourism investments. And lastly, the managing of national brand or image. In 2022, Philippines rolled out the first online visa application form for those visa required nationals applying for a tourist visa please remember there are two classifications of tourist visas for foreign tourists the first classification are those nationals of countries included under executive order number 408 and these are specific countries you will be entitled to a 30 days of visa free stay in the philippines and there is no charge to the visa. The second classification are foreign tourists, and these are nationals who are not included under EO 408. So you must apply for a 9A visa abroad from Philippine consulate covering your residence. You must also use the new online visa system, and you must pay the visa fee. If your country is not included, you must use the new online visa system, which is the visa.gov.ph to apply online. To know if you are required a tourist visa to travel in the Philippines, you must refer to the executive order number 408. What is this EO408? So it outlines the list of countries or the nationals who are not required a visa to travel in the Philippines, but that privilege is only valid for 30 days. But you must have a return ticket or onward ticket that is valid for not later than 30 days. So if you did not find your country in this EO408, then you must apply for a visa abroad from a Philippine consulate. However, the new change is that you must apply 
online for a visa so this is an example where philippines is going digital another example that philippines is going digital or they are not going to scrap this requirement it's the e-travel system or this can be consolidated in one comprehensive form now for all passengers going to the philippines as of january of 2023 the QR code will no longer be sent to your email address. So once you have a successful registration, you must either copy or screenshot the QR code, or you can also download the QR code. You must present the QR code for express lane purposes. All passengers must register within 72 hours prior to departure from country of origin. Another reason the Philippines is going digital is their rolling out of the online customs declaration form for all passengers or all arriving passengers going to Terminal 1 of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport or NAIA. So all passengers going to Terminal 1 must fill out the online customs declaration form. For all other passengers not going to this specific terminal, you can still use the paper-based form. But I think that the Philippines is going to roll out an online customs declaration form for all passengers across all terminals and across all airports in the Philippines. Another important update is that Philippines is getting ready for the new Philippine immigration law, which should be implemented soon. They are going to modernize the immigration system in the Philippines. Now the Bureau of Immigration is aiming for modernization through new technologies and services. Norman G. Tansinko is the new Bureau of Immigration Commissioner. He said that we are looking into ways of modernizing the Bureau through e-services and manless transactions. Not only will this up the level of the agency, but will also serve as a major deterrent for illicit activities. He also said that we will be pushing for the new immigration law that will update the 82-year-old Philippine Immigration Act to ensure that we adapt to modern times. For those who are asking regarding the differences under the current Philippine Immigration Law, 30 days visa-free for countries under Executive Order Number 408 or 59 days for visa-required countries, so we're only talking about the non-immigrant temporary visitor visa. Under the proposed changes, it will be 59 days or not exceeding two months. Let's move on to the category. Under the current Philippine immigration law, there is only one category of temporary visitor. However, under the proposed changes, there are more categories. For business, it will be called A1 visa, for pleasure, A2 and for health, A3. I'm going to discuss all the different types of non-immigrant visas later in this video. Let's move on to the other differences. First, there's only a few categories for temporary visas under the current Philippine immigration law, such as visitor or student visas. Under the proposed changes, there are now a more expanded category of non-immigrant visas. They will be according to alphabetical or A2M visas. Let's move on to another difference. Emigration clearance for temporary visitors will be required for those who have stayed more than six months under the current Philippine law. And then under the proposed law, immigration clearance will be required for all temporary visitors regardless of length of stay. Also, non-immigrant status may be extended up to two to six months under the current Philippine law, but under the proposed changes, you can adjust to permanent residence status if you are qualified and also apply for quota or non-quota immigrant visas. There are a lot of questions regarding Balikbayan visa. Will the Balikbayan visa be affected? The answer is no, there are no provisions repealing or updating the Balikbayan visa, but it could affect the foreign spouse or foreign children traveling to Philippines alone and all foreign tourists going forward. Also, will the retiree's visa or the SRRV be affected? The answer is no. 
There are no provisions stated in the proposed bill affecting the retiree's visa. Also, the retiree's visa is regulated under the Philippine Retirement Authority and not by the Bureau of Immigration. If you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for supporting my channel and if you haven't liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.